Um, if you don't have discipline um, and you start racking up debt mm-hmm. on that car that you've transferred over, you could actually end up with more. So like, ooh, now I have a free yeah, spot I don't to owe fill anything on this card. <laughs> So be careful. What is the perfect bite? That mix of flavors, textures, colors, and aromas that come together in one amazing amouge bouge. Big ideas expressed in small bites. That's our podcast, a variety of inspiring topics to make your financial goals and dreams a reality. Brought to you by Clark County Credit Union for your weekly serving of food reviews, financial education, and life hacks that your future self will appreciate. It's the perfect bite of interesting information to start your week. Welcome to episode 44 of The Perfect Bite. I'm Crystal Price. And I'm Shannon Hiller. Let's dig in. We love trying new dishes here at The Perfect Bite, and today we're trying Yoshia Japanese Kitchen in the northwest part of the valley. Next, we'll talk about the pros and cons of a credit card balance transfer. And finally, we'll share tips on how to break away from running on autopilot. So each week on The Perfect Bite, we'll visit a locally owned Southern Nevada restaurant that we hope will become your new favorite. And this week I'm sharing my visit to Yoshia Japanese Kitchen near North Durango and the 215. I have wanted to try Japanese curry for a while and this spot popped up on our Yelp search for locally owned restaurants. So have you had, I know you're trying curry more now, but have you had Japanese curry? I've never ever heard of Japanese curry. So I have to say I've looked at other restaurants where they take a picture of the dish and it yeah. just looks sort of yeah like I don't know <laughs> not that exciting so I was like but I want to try it because I, I like all kinds of curry so anyway we we went into the dining room it's pretty small I would say they only have about 10 tables maybe and but we got an open table which was awesome on a weekday and the menu has about five or six main sections so it was pretty easy to navigate we asked our server for some recommendations and she said they're known for their omelet rice which I first thought maybe was like a fried rice you know with egg mixed in but it is it's like a fried rice but there's an actual like omelet on top of it oh we did not take her recommendation (laughs) (laughs) because I really wanted to do the curry and so I got the chicken katsu curry it is not spicy it's just sort of like a a curry flavor but not a lot of heat There's if that no, makes like, sense tell me your number no or anything like that. and even the server was like it's not that spicy okay. um you'll be able there it was no adjustment really it was sort of a thinner I don't want to call it gravy but kind of like a, a thinner gravy and then the chicken katsu that was there it's like a breaded chicken cutlet cut mm. up it was amazing. Like okay. literally me and my husband were like, this is so good. It was a chicken breast has that panko coating. So it's crispy. And then you dip it in the curry and it comes with rice. And I, I would go back just for that chicken katsu. It was so good. Really good. We also got a chicken ramen that I really liked too, because the chicken was grilled. And then it also had some really flavorful mushrooms and other veggies like bok choy, which I really enjoyed. We also got an appetizer, goiza. It's like a cross between a pot sticker and a dumpling, and we really liked that as well. There was a, a soy sauce-based sauce, so salty, really flavorful. And I typically don't order dessert at Asian restaurants. Maybe it was the um, black bean dessert at the Vietnamese <laughs> restaurant that, that threw me off, but they had this little black sesame cake that I was just so intrigued by. It was a black sesame paste on top, a really small uh, cake-based and a soy-based cream, and it's probably about two inches three inches Mm. in diameter not very big but it was not very appetizing to look at because it's all gray (laughs) right but everybody on the reviews were like raving about it so I was like I've got to try it so (laughs) yeah the black sesame is an interesting flavor it's more like a nutty texture and flavor and I get these coconut rolls at Costco that have black sesame in it okay so it's kind of got that flavor but anyway it's really hard to describe (laughs) it's not very sweet like I said more of a nutty flavor I decided it was an Asian hostess cupcake (laughs) (laughs) yeah I can see that because it has the cream in the middle (laughs) and then the little cake in there and so anyway People on Yelp were, were loving it. So the more I ate of it, the more I liked it. So the first bite, I was like, trying to figure different. it out. Yeah. yeah. And so I just kept eating it. So anyway, I liked it. So for an appetizer, two entrees and a dessert, we spent about $45 before the tip. I definitely would go back and I think I will try that omelet rice. You can get it with chicken, shrimp, pork, any different proteins. And then that chicken katsu, man, that was so good. I think we'd have to get that one again. So if you have a recommendation for a restaurant or dish for us to try, please send us a message at theperfectbite at ccculb.com. We would love to hear your recommendations. So 
So now we're going to move on to our finance segment with a question that I'm sure if you haven't asked yourself already, you may in the future. Should I consider a balance transfer offer on my credit card? So Crystal, I get these all the time. Should people consider a balance card transfer? <laughs> I'm sure you do. In the mail, we get, mm-hmm. all get those flyers or we see ads, you know, at our local credit unions or banks. And um, usually people that do them are looking for a better rate or the best way to repay debt. Um, and either way, um, they want to save money, mm-hmm. right? For sure. So in addition to this, sometimes there are some added incentives for transferring debt to a credit card to help you make the best decision for your situation. I looked at Credit Karma to um, find out what the pros and cons of a balance transfer were. So we're going to go through the pros first. Um, and one of the first ones was that you can consolidate your payments and just focus on one payment. So you got a bunch of credit cards out there. You're sending off you know, multiple payments different dates, things like Mm -hmm. that. You just want to have one payment, make it easier on yourself. So consolidate. Another way is that you can save money on the interest. A lot of times these balance transfer cards have introductory rates, you know, 0% for the first 12 months Mm -hmm. or things like that. So if you can do that and come up with a good plan to repay, that is a great pro for doing a balance transfer. Another one is that when you move your debt to a different card, sometimes you can get a lower rate in general or favorable terms. Um, so check out the mm-hmm. rates. What are you paying? You know, on all of your cards, does it make sense to actually transfer to the card? So like even past the introductory yes. rate. Okay. Yes. Is it going to jump to 20% versus a maybe a 7% mm-hmm. that you've Important already Important to look at that because sometimes you can be lured in by that short-term yes. rate. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then on the con side, these are things to look out for, is that maybe you might not be able to pay a balance transfer fee. You have to consider, are they going to charge you a fee to transfer those monies? Usually the fee is between 3 to 5% of the amount that's transferred. Um, usually there is a minimum of either 5 to $10. So um, if it's a small amount, then great. You know, $5 might not make that mm-hmm. much of a difference. However, let's just say you're transferring $5,000 with a 3% fee, the fee would be $150. So yeah, I think three is common that yes. I've seen. Yep. So that's a big, big chunk. Is it is it worth it to actually transfer that money over? Another con is that the low interest rate doesn't last forever. On average, the rates last from six months to 21 months. Um, so you want to be sure, you know, if you've got, let's just say $20,000 of credit card debt or whatever that debt may be, you know, can you pay it off within that introductory mm-hmm. rate? If you can't, and let's just say it's only a six month term, maybe it's not in your best interest to transfer. And then an- another one would be that you could actually end up adding to your debt. Uh, when you transfer those cards cards over, it's never advisable to close out the cards that you previously had. So that will leave you with a credit card line that's now free and open. Um, if you don't have discipline um, and you start racking up debt mm-hmm. on that card that you've transferred over, you could actually end up with more. So like, ooh, now I have a free yeah, spot I don't to owe fill anything on this card. <laughs> So be careful. Yes. And then the last con that was mentioned in the article is that you may need a healthy credit in order to even qualify. So what that means is your credit score needs to qualify for this um, transfer card. If your credit is not the best, maybe you're at your limits and things like that, as much as it may be beneficial, you may not actually qualify for the balance transfer card. So things to be aware of. Our advice is definitely to understand the reason why your credit card debt even happened to begin with. Um, And then this will help you weigh the pros and cons, um, which are best for your circumstance. If you'd like a little bit more help determining your best route, we actually have a free credit card payoff calculator on our website at ccculv.org. And we'll add a link in our show notes. Now let's take a quick break to hear from our sponsor. Clark County Credit Union members have received more than $70 million in bonus dividends since 2001 just for using the credit union services they need every day. Since CCCU is owned by our account holders, they earn the dividend, not shareholders. This year, we returned a $2.4 million bonus dividend to members with auto loans, credit cards, mortgages, and checking accounts. Open an account today and start earning your own bonus dividend. Funds privately insured. Next up is our Future Self segment, inspired by The Happiness Project. As busy and demanding as life gets, sometimes you become immune to the chaos around you and you instantly switch to autopilot mode to get through the day. Do you do this? I I do. do this. 
when mm-hmm. uh, we worked in the office a lot of the time you know driving home i'd be like okay i'm, I'm getting in my car and then next thing you know i'm home I'm like how did i get here yep <laughs> autopilot that's scary right so according to an article from psychology today autopilot is a coping mechanism adopted by our brain to protect us from life's stressors mm. so while this can help you to function throughout the day it can hinder your thought process and get in the way of achieving your goals And so I just think there's moments that, like you mentioned, driving home in autopilot. I feel like sometimes scanning my emails in the morning when you get like a lot at once. I'm just like autopilot, like mass deleting things Mm -hmm. and going through. And I just I'm not really engaging my brain. So psychology today has a couple ways to switch off from autopilot mode and be more engaged. We're going to cover a couple of those today. Number one, update your morning routine. In the morning, instead of checking your phone, guilty, when you wake up, consider doing mindfulness activities. These activities can be anything that allows you to bring focus on the present moment and prepare for what the day can bring. So some suggestions were stretching, watching the sunrise, take a morning walk, or meditating. I've do you do any of those? I've been trying to do these lately because, um, yeah, I just kind of felt like I was just like rolling out of bed logging into the computer, Mm -hmm. getting the day started. And it was just like this weird fate, like fog over like those first couple, um, like 30 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm just like, okay, roll out of the bed, throw some clothes on, take a walk. Then I'm going to come home and I'm going to stretch. I'm going to lay in the backyard on the the fake grass and maybe watch the clouds a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I'll come in, make my tea, log in, and I'll be more prepared to like engage. So you're doing a bunch of those things. You're watching the sunrise. I've actually been reading a lot about the health benefits of morning light oh. and that your eyes absorb most of your vitamin D that you need from the sun Wonderful. and okay. that the morning light is the best way to do that. And then you're doing a grounding activity by anchoring yourself to the earth. Oh. So look at you. Look yeah, at you're me. getting a couple of those down. <laughs> All right. Number two, set your daily intention. Another good way to start your day is to decide what you want your future day to look like. What steps can you take to achieve it? This could be as simple as saying today, I will prioritize these three things on my list and schedule my time accordingly. Or today I'm going to be more patient and kinder to myself when I feel overwhelmed. I think this is also even something good to do the day before. Yeah. Like before you go to bed or like before I log off from work, I kind of redo my task list Mm -hmm. for the next day that is good this is what i want to do tomorrow i accomplish today exactly you're awesome tomorrow we'll work on this exactly number three take an adventurous tour breaking from autopilot mode can benefit your thoughts emotions mental and physical health so if you try to spice things up or change your routine this can actually force you to be present physically and mentally engage with your brain actively and make you feel alive so this is nothing fancy doesn't have to be a true like you know adventure to the Alps or something. (laughs) Um, Spend time with your friends, revisit your old hobbies, learn a new skill, maybe take a morning walk or hike like Crystal's doing or visit a museum. Um, One thing that I've been doing and actually I just got for Christmas, Mm. I played the clarinet band nerd for many years and I even played into college and I just kind of stopped. Like, I don't know. I, it was something that I didn't I don't know. I just stopped doing it. And so my sister-in-law got me a clarinet for oh Christmas. Gosh, that's so cool. And I'm like, okay, because it's two things. It's like physical, moving your hands, reading the music, mm-hmm. engaging your mind. Um, studies show that music helps keep your brain active and alert and can help prevent Alzheimer's. So yeah. I'm going to get out that clarinet. I'm buying new reeds and new corks <laughs> and kind of fixing it up because it's, it's an older clarinet. But I'm excited. I, I'm curious to see how much my brain muscle memory remembers yeah if I can just be like knowing all the notes my uh-huh. kids ask me like do you even know how to do this anymore I'm like I don't know but I literally <laughs> played it for like eight or nine years so I'm, I'm curious how that goes I'm sure you will yeah you're like I remember this song yeah I'm like, can I do a scale I don't know and then like you mentioned morning walks I've learned when I don't do them I can tell that I don't feel as good for the day yeah yeah so I listen to a podcast sometimes, some educational. Same. I've got my morning podcast <laughs> mm-hmm. rituals, and it's like if I don't listen to it, it's like I'm missing it. Like yeah. I didn't get my fit. I mean, you and I listen to mostly The Perfect Fight, but we also listen to <laughs> other podcasts. So, um, Or just sometimes my thoughts. Like I'll purposely be like, you know what? I'm not going to listen to music or anything and just think. So I think that when you're living your life on autopilot mode, you just kind of feel disconnected from everything around you. So trying these different ideas for your morning with mindfulness and activities that make you break out of that kind of comfort zone, it's really going to expose your mind to new things and help you get out of your rut for the new year. 
We want to hear from you. Send us your financial questions or money topics that you'd like to learn more about. And don't forget any fun local food recommendations. Our email is theperfectbite at ccculv.com. Thank you for listening to this week's episode brought to you by Clark County Credit Union. For additional money management tips and financial calculators, check out our website at ccculv.org. Now that was The Perfect Bite.